Hi, my name is Connie Coquinas and you're watching the video Measuring in Nine Positions of Gaze Prism Cover Test. In this video, we'll be discussing how to use a prism cover test to measure the deviation in the diagnostic positions of gaze. Okay, in the previous video, we discussed how the deviation in incommodate strabismus changes dependent on which eye is fixing and dependent on position of gaze. So it's now important to transfer the skills you've learnt about how to perform the PCT to incompetent strabismus in the way that we can now do a PCT or perform a PCT in the diagnostic positions of gaze. Now, in order to do this, we'll obviously have to move the eyes into the position that we're interested in measuring. And we can do this in one of two ways. We can either move the patient's eyes into the position of gaze, or we can move the patient's head and thereby ask the patient to look into prime position, which will ensure that we actually get the patient looking into um, a specific position of gaze. So if we have a look at the top image here, we can see that the young girl is being asked to look up into LAVO elevation. And so the orthoptist is moving the eyes in this particular instance. And in the image below, what we can see here is that the head has been moved so that the eyes will be um, in the diagnostic position opposite to the head or that the eyes will be in the direction opposite to where the head moves. So if we look at the first image here, we can see that the head has been moved to the right and what we see is the eyes are to the left. In the second image, um, we have the head to the left, the eyes will move over into um, the right and so on. Now, if you're assessing the deviation in the distance, you have no option really but to move the head. Uh, at near, you have the option of either moving the head or the eyes. Now, if you are moving the eyes, um, ensure that you put the patient into the most extreme position that you can, where the nose is not obstructing the, um, the, the line of sight for the patient, so that it can be as reproducible as possible or the PCT can be as reproducible as possible uh, between visits. This also goes for the head movement. Again, you want to move the head into a position where um, you've got maximum rotation of the eyes and the patient can still see with a right and a left eye. So again, make sure that when you're doing these assessments, the nose is not impeding the patient's view of the target. Okay, now in relation to how to perform the PCT, you will translate the skills you've learned already in how to measure um, a deviation in, in concomitant strabismus to that of incompetent um, strabismus. So the skill is the same in terms of using an accommodative target, you utilize the alternate cover test, and you're obviously watching the eye under the prism as you're measuring. Uh, the deviation, you're looking for neutralization of movement. So there's no change here in the, um, the way we perform the PCT, except that we're obviously now going to do it in different positions of gaze. So you should uh, assess the deviation near and far. Uh, this is so that we can have a look and to see whether the palsy is causing any difference between near and far. It's not so much to um, look for accommodative components, obviously. That's more related to concomitant strabismus. If you have an abnormal head posture, you may want to perform a PCT in both uh, with the head posture and with the, um, without the head posture. Now, because you have a difference between um, fixing right and fixing left in terms of the size of the deviation, you should measure or perform a PCT fixing right, fixing left. So that means that you should perform the, pr the prison cover test with the prism in front of the right eye and then repeated in front of the left eye. In the example we have here to the right, the patient is fixing left and we're measuring the right deviation. Okay, the other um, component that you can now do or the other um, assessment you can do with the prison cover test is not only assess the deviation in the nine positions of gaze, but also with the head tilted. Uh, we'll talk more about this in a subsequent video when we discuss the Bilchowski head tilt test. But please be aware that you actually have two additional positions that you can measure with the PCT, uh, tilt right and tilt left. And again, the image that we have here to the right, the patient is being assessed with the head tilted to the right. 
A couple of other points. When you're using prisms, you need to hold the prism parallel to the plane of the eye. So you can see again in the image to the right that that is what is being done with the prism. It's being held parallel to the plane of the eye. Now, obviously, it can be quite cumbersome to do nine positions of gaze, fixing right, fixing left. And so um, it is appropriate at times to select the positions of gaze that are most relevant to the particular condition. Okay, and just a couple of other points about now vertical and horizontal prisms. You're obviously going to have patients that may have a combination of a vertical and a horizontal deviation. You can use the prisms um, independent of one another, so you can measure the vertical um, deviation independent of the horizontal deviation. However, I do suggest that um, you do stack the vertical and the horizontal uh, prism to ensure that your measurements are as accurate as possible. The larger the deviation is, uh, it can get more difficult to um, accurately measure with the PCT when you're not stacking those two component or the two prisms. Okay, so how do we go about recording the results? Uh, you'll need now a grid format to represent the nine positions of gaze, and you'll record the deviation in each of the positions of gaze that you measured the deviation. You should also uh, document the distance that the test was performed and the eye that was fixing, so whether it was fixing right or fixing left. And you can record, or some will to record, which is a right or left gaze, but it is always assumed that this is right side and this is left side. So this measurement here is dextro version, this measurement here is labo version, here is uh, dextro elevation, dextro depression, depression and so on. Now in terms of the distance or that you choose to um, measure the deviation in, often the distance that's selected is the distance where the deviation is greatest. So if the deviation is greatest at far, then you would perform the, um, the nine positions of gaze at far. Okay, so let's come back to our case study, Miss Jones. And in this particular instance, the PCT has been performed in various positions of gaze. And what we can see here is that elevation and depression was not measured, but that we do have um, the deviation in right gaze and in left gaze. So what we can see here is that in prime position, we have an eight prism diopter um, vertical deviation. The patient is fixing left, so we have a right hyper, uh, which was also noted on the cover test. And what we see is that it increases in right gaze, the greatest deviation, sorry, in left gaze, the greatest deviation is in lavo depression. And if we move over to right gaze, we see that there is a decrease in the deviation over to the right. This will overall assist us in coming to a diagnosis of Mr. Jones' condition. And if we use the principle that the deviation is generally greatest in the field of action of the affected muscle, we can see that um, this is lavo depression. And in lavo depression, the two muscles that have been utilized in that position are the left inferior rectus and the right superior oblique. So it potentially, it's one of these muscles that's the affected muscle. Okay, so in summary, um, the PCT can obviously be used in nine positions of gaze by either moving the head or the eyes. Uh, remember that you can also utilize a prism cover test with the head tilted. And very importantly, remember that when you're performing the PCT, to hold the prism parallel to the plane of the eye. But otherwise, the technique of performing the PCT is exactly that which you have learned in uh, concomitant strabismus previously. Okay, thank you. That brings us to the conclusion of this video.